The victim is bound and lying on the floor. The assailant is sitting on top of him. Waving a syringe filled with an unknown substance, a bottle of bleach is on the floor nearby. This game is fucking brutal, man. Welcome back, everybody, to... This is the police. I'm your host, Officer Falcon, to you, my friend. Let's get underway over here. Freeburg Tribune. We're in day number 10, if I'm correct, as well. Representative of Orthodox Church may appear in Freeburg. Local resident denounces a mayor for theft of antique necklaces. Good. Yeah, go ahead and denounce that goddamn mayor who I hate a lot. Freeburg authorities halt campaign, citing city safety. Alrighty. <laughs> Let's go on over to work here today. Um, I have a little bit of an update for you guys as well in that. Little didn't come into work today. God damn it, Little. I'm a little bit mad at you, I gotta say. Yeah, I have a little bit of an update for you guys here, which I will disclose here pretty soon. Let's start our day. Why do we have like four detectives? We gotta um, swap some detectives over to shift day here, I wanna say, right? It's about time we did some management to our shifts here. So let's get back to the map here, and I'll talk about this little update. Um, Stovall, which was my best comp without a stripe, decided to retire. This actually happened... Oh my god, messages. I'll, I'll discuss this here pretty soon. Uh, Tony DeBrito is today a hero, having pulled a drowning Senator Wallace Green from the river. The municipality of the Senator's recommendation has decided to reward this outstanding officer. The ceremony is scheduled for July 27, and the event will op be open to the press, as well as Mr. Green's family, who wish to personally thank the police. Make sure nothing unusual happens to this officer, so he will be able to attend the ceremony and receive his medal without complications. <laughs> Make sure nothing happens to him, huh? What are you telling me, game? DeBrito, you better keep your nose clean, my friend. Martin Robbins was able to brilliantly pass all their exams. They've earned a boost. Hey, good job, Robbins. He's the guy that I sent to the police academy. Funeral. Yeah, that's Moser who died due to the racist gangs. In my defense, I made it a point not to send black cops out that day, but Moser was already working a case prior to the racist gangs, you know, uprising. So, you know, you could be mad at me, but hey, I didn't know pre-existing cases would also be an issue. Feminist protest. Yeah, yeah, this is because last episode we... Thanks to the mayor, as always, I had to silence a protest, and now I'm being, you know, taken to court for it. I didn't have enough money to falsify evidence for it as well, so now I'm kind of in a bit of trouble here. I'm not sure how it's going to play out tomorrow, because tomorrow's the date for that. Um, let's see, let's go to police station. So, Stovall, who used to be in shift A, quit at the end of last episode. You guys didn't see that because um, I ended the episode and I thought we had like one event at the end, right? It was somebody like complaining or no, I think it was Price. It was Price who said he was retiring, which he did me a favor because I had to fire him anyway. So I ended the episode and then I continued to jump over to day 10 for today's episode. And the next event after that popped up and it was Stovall saying, hey, I quit because I want to spend more time with my family. He just happened to be my best cop and he quit. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty salty about it, but you know, it happens. What can I do? I guess he was on the older side too, so I don't know. It sucks, but what can you do? Um, so really quickly here, let's look in my person. Please go to personnel. Um, we have four detectives down here and three up here, right? Let's move. <laughs> the burrito. I got to be really careful with you, huh? Armstrong, move over to shift day. So we'll have three detectives on each side, um, and Little is part of shift B. Remember, she didn't come into work today, so technically speaking, shift B has seven beat cops. It does seem. Meaning we should probably send, or we could hire. Yeah, we could just hire somebody for shift day straight up. Okay, that's good for me. So let's go over to shift day, and we will hire... You're a bit on the older side. Ling Fang's 100, William Adama's 100. Haruyo Asano. Let's go with um, Ling Fang. She seems very young, very vibrant. So hopefully um, that helps her out. Shift day, right? Yeah, okay. So you hire for shift day. So now... Shift A should have six beat cops. B has seven, allegedly, with Little, who... Oh, no, no, it's her. she's right here. So we have six. We're just a short Little here today. So six and six on both sides. Perfect. And then we have three detectives on each side. Excellent. Just want to make it that out of the way here. All right, so we're good to go. And Robin's got a... He passed the exam quite well. We have an attempted murder at the suburb. Sometimes your officers will arrest only one or two criminals, but when you're taking down a whole group, it is better to bring a paddy wagon. A truly professional staff can cope without the need for special transport, but most officers prefer a paddy wagon when the situation calls for it. Too bad the department doesn't have any money for one. Oh, oh, great. Thanks a lot for bringing it to my attention. Attempted murder. An ice cream van struck a schoolboy. The ambulance arrived quickly, but the boy was declared dead on the scene. Oh, that's no good. 
The nearby residents are enraged and demand justice from the driver of the van. He's currently holed up inside the ambulance while the paramedics try to reason with the crowd. The situation is quickly spiraling out of control. I mean, it makes sense. You, you ran over a goddamn kid and killed him. That's fucked up. Um, alrighty, well, I don't have a paddy wagon. I can only send one cop? Really? Only one cop for a Hulk mob? That wants to kill this man? I don't know, man. Sogo, go take a look, my friend. <laughs> Sogo's like, why me? Why me against an entire mob? Well, I really don't want to sacrifice my striped people if something bad happens, Sogo, so I hope you understand, buddy. I wish you the best of luck, though. Now, you know, use your charm out there. I believe you have some innate charm abilities to kind of get you out of the way here. The Sands need help again. Jack, some black gangster hit one of our shops. It's too much for us to deal with right now. Can you help? You need three cops? <sighs> All right, here's the thing. I, I, feel, I figure we might as well help the Sands over the city hall, because I hate the mayor more than I actually hate Sands. It makes any sense. I mean, I'm, I'm one bitch or the other's bitch, one way or the other. Uh, at least the Sands have been giving me money. Well, City Hall keeps taking jobs away from me, so, you know, fuck them. Uh, no, you know what, refuse. I'm like a, uh, you know what, just think of me as a very complicated um, chief of police here. I I try to do the right thing, but in occasions I have to do the bad thing. That's basically what it is here. Uh, attempted murder at the suburbs, the situation is more serious than we thought. Requesting reinforcement, oh my god. Sogo, you need four? You need everybody on deck? Okay, I can't do everybody on deck, dude. I need at least somebody available here. So I'll send Kochi. Kochi, please be careful. Subaki. And Purdy. I'm gonna leave Yancey back here with me in case we need to have another call here. You guys, I need you guys to, like, speed it up and get to this disturbance fast and come back soon. Because if we get any more calls here at the moment, I only have Yancey available. Mafia Simon. That's gonna be Sans be upset. No, no, this is a... Oh, it's a, one of those things where he wants to look the other way. Um... Going down at the courthouse at 18.30. I might let him do whatever he has to do. I just hope he doesn't fucking have him kill people again. Like, it's one thing. It's one thing if he, you know, handles the situation, but then if he kills people, it's even worse. Attempted murder report. Everything fine. Offender was caught. Officers unharmed and civilians unharmed. Good. That's a good way to handle that. Um, I need you guys to come back soon, though, because I have two things popping up. Can you get here before 10 seconds? I hope so. What is this one? Noise complaint. An elderly man called the police station reporting that terrible screams have been coming from the sawmill for over an hour. The hell is going on? What's the guy got to do to get a little sleep around here? You better go check it out. Four cops? Yo, can you guys get here back soon? Like, really, really soon. Not gonna make it. Not gonna make it. Oh, fudge. I only have Yancey. Yancey alone out here? It's like a allegedly a four-cop thing, though. Yancey, do me a favor, dude. If you need backup, please call. I'm sorry, Yancey. I can't let that call just go, though. Henry Sand Road. Mr. Boyd, I managed a large fleet of vehicles and wanted to organize a workshop for my new drivers. They have to learn how to behave on the road, so your patrolmen will never even need to look twice at our cars. Please send three of your best officers to ride all day with my people and explain the intricates of traffic flow and police monitoring. I've heard about the problems your department faces, particularly your obsolete fleet of uh, police vehicles. So in return, I would be happy to donate a paddy wagon. <gasps> oh, why you gotta bribe me this way, dude? All right, we gotta do it. I need a paddy wagon, apparently. It was strictly told to me you don't got enough money for one. This guy's offering me one for just, I don't know, being a scumbag alongside of him. <laughs> Alrighty, Purdy, Sogo, and Sabaki. The shitty thing is he mentioned the whole day, right? So are you guys really gone the entire day? You guys, please come back. I can't work the phones with only two cops. And only one's available at the moment. Here's a robbery at the drugstore. Coach is going to have to go on this one. Look, another four mission. <laughs> An emergency call was received from an all-night drugstore. An addict is attempting to... Oh, now it's an addict, too. That's no good. Addicts are just completely off the rocker. He violently threatened a female pharmacist, demanding she open the cabinets. Oh, boy, oh, boy. There's going to be no cop back in time for this. Kochi. Kochi. Please, Kochi. Be the hero that I deserve. I'm so worried about this. <laughs> right, a cop's completely at the moment. Noise complaint at the sawmill. Okay, we have choices, though. Hey, you know what? 
Best case scenario, the guy gets away, and as long as Yancy is fine, I'll take it. The sawmill is surrounded by a 9-foot fence, and the gates are locked from the inside. Shouts can be heard from within. Ram the gate with a police cruiser, knock on the gate, break the gate open. Let's just ram the fucking gate. A man is threatening a young boy with a circular saw. The man is screaming hysterically. Oh, good God, of course I would get the wackle by myself. Raise the gun at the man and order him to release the boy. Pounce on the criminal. Take aim at the criminal and shoot to kill. Let's go for the last one. Offender caught. Officer unharmed. Yeah! How did I catch the guy if I shot to kill? I don't even care, but hey, you know what? Yancey made it back alive from only a one by himself, and it was like a four-cop requirement. Well, not a requirement, but, you know, suggested. Pretty good. Henry sent us a message for me. Chief, we were along and went over the basics with our empty-headed drivers. We're done for the day. Meanwhile, Mr. Sand dropped off a brand new paddy wagon. It's a nice piece of equipment. Too good for the idiots we we'll packing inside. Oh, yep, they're gone for the entire day. At least we have a panty wagon, but hoo hoo, we better get a minimum amount of calls because now we're down to only two cops. Kochi? Yeah! Kochi, on her own, was able to take this situation down. Good job, Kochi. I know I gave you that strike for a reason. Oh, is the day almost over? Please tell me it's over. It's over. Oh, this is the call from Sands. You know what? That one we ignore. Let them do what they're going to do. Should we? Should we stop it? Let me, let me take a little peek at it first. SWAT's required. Homicide. During sentencing, a serial killer by the name of Albert Ramirez seized a gun from the holster of the court bailiff, and after shooting several witnesses, barricaded himself inside the courtroom, a young sonographer has been taken hostage. Oh my god. Oh my god. I I gotta look the other way for... what's his face? Residential area. Assault. Emergency medical services arrived on call for a man complaining of chest pains. While they were th uh, treating, treating him, the man suddenly attacked one of the EMTs, shouting wildly about the global pharmaceutical conspiracy. The other personnel managed to escape and called the police. Um, alright. Well, we gotta do this one. I have to ignore the other one, apparently, for what's-his-face. I'm gonna send my two striped officers for this one over here. Please, no more calls. Please, no more calls. Courthouse, I know, I know, I'm purposely letting you go. Homicide report, yeah. Offender escape, he probably killed people too, yep. Yeah. That might be a reprimand by the mayor, but fuck him, he's always reprimanding me. Here comes, um, homeboy giving me $6,000 for looking away from the courthouse. Those $6,000 better be worth it, man. Because <laughs> I'm going to hear shit from what's-his-face. Take care of the hero? Uh-oh. Uh that guy better still be alive, that the brittle guy. Assault residential area, the door of the apartment is locked from the inside, and unintelligible screams can be heard from within. Knock on a door, enter an adjoining apartment, and climb over the balcony. I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> the door to the apartment is locked from the inside, and unintelligible screams can be heard from within. Just break down the door, man. Oh, that's a pleasant sight. The victim is bound and lying on the floor. The assailant is sitting on top of him. Waving a syringe filled with an unknown substance, a bottle of bleach is on the floor nearby. This game is fucking brutal, man. Have you noticed how some of the, the, the situations we run into here are just like crazy, like people getting like hits being like tortured with saws? This guy's over here injecting people with bleach? I like it, it's really grim and dark. Anyway, I mean, it's fucked up, but you know, it's very like, jeez, man, this is like some CSI episode cranked up to like a hundred or something. Um, let's see, alright, so point the gun at the man and order him to lie face down on the floor. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be complying with that. Drop the syringe now. Sir, we are on your side. Tell us about this conspiracy. <laughs> oh, no, wait, this... Yeah, this is the MT guy, right? Um, Should we um humor him? Let's humor him. The man jumps up and grabs some papers from the table. There, good, he's off the guy. Everything is written down right here. All the evidence you'll need. They created these medications to control our minds, man. It's the government, man! Quit ranting and release the doctor immediately. Strike the man with his nightstick. Well, the Freeburg police will begin an investigation right away. Let's talk down at the station. Let's strike him down right now. Boom! Alrighty. I'd figure, had I told him to come out of the station, he'd figure we were just part of the problem ourselves. So, you know, I saw him when he was off. The, the guy just hit him with a nightstick, knock him out. Bada bing, bada boom. Hero. Jack, you swore an oath to serve the city. If you can't keep your promise, we won't keep ours. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> what, are you kidding me right now? 
Well, so much for keeping his nose clean. What what is going on with this case? Like everybody working this case gets killed. Moser got killed. Now Debrito got killed. What case is this? This is the one they shot the the black protester, right? Freeburg is just full of racists. That's all it gets saying. You can't hold me responsible for this this hate filled city. Each of your employees receives a weekly salary. The ones who are still alive, anyway. But if you bury the paperwork, you can pull in some money from the. Any disease office of salaries, oh my god. So long as they're alive and healthy on paper, City Hall will keep printing perfectly healthy paychecks. <laughs> we need some, to do some paperwork for this dead employee. Declared dead? De de <laughs> Delay the paperwork, do it. Oh my god. I'm, 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 I hope you've noticed, I've lost two cops recently, and two detectives, and they've already had been working a case prior to whatever bullshit happened. With Moser, he died because of the racist gangs, but he had been on the job uh, working that case before I even sent him out. And then Brito, I didn't even touch this guy whatsoever. I just switched him over to another shift, and he died working that same case still. That 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 case is just poison to me. It's just a cancer, toxic case that I want no part of anymore. Honestly. Okay, let's end the day here. Jesus. Day eleven. Small drug dealer invade Freeburg. All City Hall, um, City Hall employees awarded company cars for personal use. Freeburg to host semifinals of Ute Hockey League. Let's go on over to work here. This is going to be shift day, correct? This is where we lost Stovall recently. <laughs> oh, here's the court case, too. Good. Mr. Boyd, why did you send your officers to the feminist protest? It's my job. The feminists could prove a threat. <laughs> we received noise complaints and refused to answer. Um, should I just go ahead and give the finger to the mayor? We received noise complaints. Let's go with that one. Let's just play it cool for now. Someone called the police station complaining about the noise in the park. In your opinion, did any of the participants at the protest pose any actual danger to others? Definitely, definitely not. It's hard to say. I don't know. It's hard to say. You never really know who's dangerous and who's not until it's too late. I like this yes or no answers I'm giving over here. You know, just somewhere in the middle. Mr. Boyd, you're married, are you not? Yes, but my wife and I don't live together. Why? None of your business. How does that have to do... What does that have to do anything with this? What is it? Yeah, exactly. What does that have to do with my work? What are your personal feelings about women? Good? Bad? The same as men? That's an improper question. I like this one right here, because it's true. Why would it be any different? As far as I'm concerned, they're the same as men. Some women are great, and some I don't care much for. But same as men, as that means that I, some men are great, and some I don't care much for as well, okay? Don't misconstrue my words here, lady. Mr. Boyd, did you give the order to suppress the protest by force? Yes, or blame City Hall? Uh, this is the important one I gotta say, right? <sighs> yeah. Yes, that was my order. In my new role as corrupt official, I had to give up some of my favorite habits. I couldn't turn off my phone when my head ached, couldn't sleep till noon on Saturday and let the rest of HQ take up the slack. No more days off to go fishing, but my weekly visit to the old colony club was more like tradition. One night a week, I absorbed cigar smoke, the vague smell of alcohol, the stench of urine, all mixed with toxic levels of old drunken belches. Same picture it was 30 years ago. Tradition's got to be honored. And to stay faithful to the tradition, you've got to respect the standard rituals. When you're about to roll out of the club, you need to take a deep breath and count to a hundred. If your stomach doesn't do a backflip, you should be good to make it home. This time I only got up to sixty. I was interrupted. Why? You look even better than you do on TV. There's nothing more impolite than approaching people in the alley at the old colony. This is the most private place in the city. All who enter here dirty their shoes with the most elite stream of vomit in Freeburg. This asphalt has been blessed by judges, lawyers, artists, businessmen, and all our politicians. Takes a lot of balls to crash the party. My head was a drunken haze, but I knew who he was. A cartoon gangster suit straight out of Dick Tracy. 
Fancy voice, fruit cologne, sassy strut. That's how the newspapers described Vikis Varga, rising star in Freeburg's criminal underworld. He appeared out of nowhere, and with the support of the local punks, Varga broke all the old rules of organized crime. He killed those who could not be killed, traded what could not be traded, and robbed those who could not be robbed. In just a single month, this man had gathered an incredible amount of power. He's been called everything from a clown to a madman to a criminal genius, and more often than not, he's called a low-class upstart short on ideas. But if Vargas was one of the old crime bosses, he'd have been cut into pieces and fed to the river. Look past this guy's arrogance and there's something about him. The city is still deciding what to do with him. Meanwhile, he's burning down the houses of old city mobsters. Not the best time to talk, Mr. Varga. Well, you know my name. I'm flattered, although not very surprised, to be honest. I might be a little short on manners. Like they say in your fair city, with the right manners, you can go anywhere. Well, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay right here. Even the criminal world needs manners, Mr. Varga. And one of them is this. Don't interfere with a drunken cop who's trying to take a shit and puke at the same time. Oh, you exaggerate. But is Freeburg always so gentle with its officers? You've been a bit roughed up lately. I see you already know Freeburg quite well, Mr. Varga. Well, I love to learn and look around. But I do know that the inhabitants of this fair city should be friends, Jack. Maybe it's true I don't have the best manners. After all, it's only polite for friends to share their phone numbers. This city of yours moves so fast. I feel like I'm hooked on amphetamines all over again. You wake up in the morning full of ideas, and by nightfall, you've all had each other killed. So don't wait too long to call. I don't mind if you're drunk. It's all the more fun. I'll be stoned myself, most likely. Hell, I'm a little stoned right now. It's the only way to live in this place. I like your city, Jack. I'm here to stay. If it weren't for the phone number written on my arm, I probably wouldn't have remembered the conversation in the morning. But there was no reason to worry. I'd be getting a reminder soon. All right. And there you guys have it. So we're going to wrap it up here for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up. Stick around for the next one. I will catch you next time.